All right, so welcome to Excellent Grades Academy. This is Dr. Bison Muntali. We're looking at anatomy today, human anatomy, the introduction to tissues and epithelial tissue. So let's get into it without wasting much time. Okay, so our lesson our lesson objectives today, number one, is to define and explain what a tissue is, to discuss the different components of tissues, to define and explain epithelial tissues, to discuss different types of epithelial tissues. Once you have attained these objectives, then you have truly mastered and understood epithelial tissue, and no exam question can elude you. So what is a tissue? A tissue is simply a group or a layer of cells that work together to perform a specific function interwoven in non-cellular non components. Now, the, a tissue has got two major parts that you must know. That is cells and extracellular matrix. So a simple definition of a tissue is just cells plus extracellular matrix. Now, we all have an idea of what cells are the most basic functional unit that makes up a living thing. Now let's define what extracellular matrix is. So extracellular matrix is a large network of proteins and other molecules that surround, number one, support and give structure to cells and tissues in the body. Now in extracellular matrix, there are two components, major components that we find, namely protein fibers and ground substance. There are three types of protein fibers that we should all know. Number one, collagen fibers that are made up of collagen, reticular fibers and elastic fibers. Ground substance is made up of mainly water, about 70%, and large organic molecules such as glycosaminoglycans, which are just uh, GAGs, protoglycans, and glycoproteins. All right, so a quick recap. A tissue is made up of cells and extracellular matrix. Extracellular matrix is made up of protein fibers and ground substance. And we've explained the types of protein fibers. We've explained what is found in ground substance. So this picture here is just illustrating the extracellular matrix. So you, as you can see here, this is the protein fiber. It's made up of collagen, so this is a collagen protein fiber. All right. And then what is around here is what we call the ground substance. All right. So in the body, there are four basic types of tissues. Despite the complexity of the human body, there are only four basic types of tissues. Number one, the epithelial tissue that we are looking at today, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and the nerve tissues. Okay, So all of these tissues are formed by cells and extracellular matrix. What differentiates this tissue is that there is a difference in the proportion in the tissues between the cells and the extracellular matrix. This table here shows you the basic characteristics of the four basic tissues in the body. So in epithelial tissue, the tissue that we are really interested in today, this epithelial tissue, the cells are aggregated polyhedral cells and the extracellular matrix is in very small amount and its function is that it lines body surfaces and body cavities and it's involved in granular secretion. Okay, so these other tissues we'll look at when we are looking at them, at them specifically. Today we're just focusing on epithelial tissue. I want you to focus on the arrangement of cells. So the cells are aggregated polyhedral cells and the extracellular matrix is very small in amount. The function of epithelial tissue is that it lines body surfaces, both internal and external surfaces, and granular secretion. All right. So now let's get into it. Epithelial tissue, membranes. 
what is epithelial tissue so epithelial tissue as we as as, as we have already said or stated is composed of closely aggregated polyhedral cells with very little extracellular amount so these cells rest on a lining that we call the basement membrane the basement membrane so epithelial tissue is made up of polyhedral cells that are aggregated closely and they lie on the basement membrane so what you should know about epithelial tissue is that this tissue has got very little extracellular substance it has very little extracellular substance what are the functions of epithelial tissue so some of the functions of epithelial tissue include number one covering covering lining and protecting surfaces e.g the skin covering body surfaces both internal and surface and uh, uh, external surfaces lining of internal surfaces and protecting substances e.g the skin secondly epithelial tissue is involved in absorption for example the epithelial cells that are in the intestines are involved in absorption thirdly excretion the epithelial cells of glands are involved in excretion number four is contractility so myoepithelial cells that are found especially in glands are involved in contractility and there are those epithelial tissues that are have a very space special sensation function for example those that are found in the olfactory region in the nose and in the gustatory region those that are found in the mouth for taste what are some of the characteristics of epithelial tissues okay so the form and characteristics of epithelial tissues are that epithelial cells can either be columnar cuboidal or squamous so we are trying to classify epithelial tissue here based on the shape of their cells based on the shape of their cells so if the cells of your epithelial tissue appear more elongated than wide those are columnar cells if the width and the height is the same we say they are cuboidal but if the cells of your epithelial tissue are flattened cells then we say they are squamous so epithelial tissue can be classified according to the shape of their cells they can either be columnar cuboidal or squamous columnar cuboidal or squamous all right now now what you should know about epithelial tissue is that epithelial tissue can renew easily and they renew continuously by mitosis so this is a very important characteristic because epithelial tissue lines body surfaces so there's a constant degradation to the cells to the cells of epithelial tissue all right so because of their uh, degeneration by substances that pass through cavities these cells have got a characteristic of continuous renewal and this renewal is achieved by mitosis epithelial tissue also lack a direct blood supply and lymphatic supply so we say they are avascular now the question is that how do they receive oxygen and nutrients so oxygen and nutrients reach the epithelial cells via diffusion okay? via diffusion via diffusion epithelial tissue are closely adhered together so the cells of epithelial tissue are closely adhered together by tight junctions cellular junctions and the different types of cellular junctions that we're going to talk about number four epithelial tissues are anchored to a basement membrane it is also called a basal lamina but as we are going to discuss further in this video you're going to see that under light micro microscopy it is viewed as a basement membrane and under electron uh, scanning uh, microscopy it uh, it shows two layers 
Okay. And then fifth, the fifth characteristic is that epithelial tissue has got structural and functional polarity. All right. So now let's look at the basal lamina and the basement membrane. So this is just a substance that epithelial cells uh, rest on. So this is just uh, a substance that uh, it's a sheet or a substance that epithelial tissue rest on and it separates the epithelial tissue from the underlying connective tissue. All right. Now, the basement membrane is also referred to as a basal lamina. They are used interchangeably because when you look at the substance that epithelial tissue lie on, on a light compound microscopy, it appears as one structure. So you call it a basement membrane. But if you look at the substance under the electron microscope, you find that the basement membrane is made up of two layers, which are the basal lamina and the reticular lamina. So under the electron microscope, this, this sheet here that you can see in red that I'm pointing at using the cursor is what we are referring to as the basement membrane. And these cells that are lying on top of it are what we call epithelial cells. These are epithelial cells. Now, we are saying that under light microscopy, this structure here appears as one structure, a single structure, and it is called the basement membrane. But if you look at this basement membrane under electron microscopy, you find that it is made up of two structures. Number one is the basal lamina that is close to the cells, where the cells lie on, the basal lamina. And number two is the reticular lamina. So this is the, the picture taken from an electron microscope that shows the basement membrane. So the upper part here, this one that I'm highlighting here is the basal lamina. And the part that is underneath just here, this is the reticular lamina. So this one that is dark, where the arrows are pointing here, this is the basal lamina, this part here. And this part that is light is the reticular lamina. The basal lamina is made up of glycoproteins that are called laminins and type 4 collagen. Type 4 collagen. While the reticular fibers are made up of another type of collagen, which is type 7 collagen. Now, what are the functions of the basal lamina and the basement membrane? Number one, to support epithelial cells. Number two, it acts as a barrier. Number three, it gives the cell its polarity. Number four, cell growth. So it allows your epithelial cells to grow. Number five, cell migration. Number six, cell-to-cell -cell interaction. All right? So these are some of the functions of the basal lamina. Those are the functions of the basal lamina. This is just another photomicrography that is showing you the basal lamina and the reticular lamina. These are the two types, the two parts of your basement membrane. A quick recap. So what we are saying is that your basement membrane is made up of two parts. It has the basal lamina, which is the upper part where your epithelial cells lie, and it has an inferior part that is called the reticular lamina. All right. Now, remember what we said that epithelial cells are adhered to one another very strongly. So what makes your epithelial cells to adhere to one another very strongly are what we call intercellular junctions. Intercellular junctions. And we've got a number of intercellular junctions. So the intercellular junctions that hold epithelial cells together are, number one, moving from the top of the cell to the bottom of the cell are zonular occludings 
So the zonular occludings or the tight junctions lie at the apical pore of the cell. The apical pore of the cell is the topmost part of the cell. So your zonular occludings or your tight junctions, and then from your zonular occludings, remember we are moving from top to bottom, you have your zonular adherence. And then from your zonular adherence, you, you have your gap junctions or your communicating junctions. And then from there, you have your desmosomes or macular adherence. Now, I want you to pay attention to this diagram here. So this is your epithelial cells. This is your epithelial cell. This part that I'm, highlight, I'm, I'm highlighting here that has got the microvilli, this is referred to as the apical pore of the cell. And then this part that rests on your basal lamina is called your basal pore. Now, the cells or the junctions that hold two cells together, from your apical pore to your basal pore, from your apical pore going down, the first junction is called your zonular occludens or your tight junctions, your tight junctions. So these are your tight junctions here. From your tight junctions, you have your adherence junctions or zonular adherence. And then you have desmosomes. From desmosomes, you've got gap junctions, which are also called communicating junctions depending on, the, on their function. And then there is a special type of adherence or tight junction that holds the epithelial cell to the basal lamina. This is called your hemidesmosome. So your hemidesmosome is the junction that anchors your epithelial cells to your basement membrane to make sure that your epithelial cell does not detach from your basement membrane. Okay, so let's move on. So what are your functions of your tight junctions or your zonular occludens? So these hold cells together and they have a barrier function. What this means is that they prevent cells from move substances from moving substances from moving at the apical surface of the cell. So you want to prevent you want to prevent substances from moving from this cell to this other cell at the apical pole of the cell. So your zonular occludings will, will carry out that barrier function. Will carry out that barrier function. Your zonular adherence function to adhere cells together very firmly so that your cells do not separate. Okay? So they, 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 they encircle the cells. So the way, a way to know that these are zonular adherence is that they encircle the cells. Gap junctions or communicating junctions are specialized intercellular connections between cells. So they allow substances to move from one cell to another. So those are gap junctions, as you can see from this diagram here. A substance can move from cell A here and go to cell B here using the gap junction or the communicating junction. Desmosomes are also just used to adhere cells together. Hemidesmosomes, hemidesmosomes adhere the cell to the basement membrane. So this is your electron photomicrography that shows your zonular occludings here are made up of proteins called occludings. Zonular adherence here, these are your desmosomes. Okay? So if you look at the junctions between two cells under an electron microscope, this is, this is how it appears. Okay, so now at the apical surface of the cell, We've got structures there. They've got different structures there. So specializations of the cell structure, of the cell surface structure. So at the apical surface of the cell, 
you can find projections there, the different types of projections. And the different types of projections that are on the surface of the cells depend on where the cells are found. Now, what you need to know is that epithelial cells are found in different regions of the body. They're found in different regions of the body. And depending on the region where they are found in the body, there's a specialized cell structure that is found on the surface of the cell. All right. So for the epithelia that is found in the GIT, in the gastrointestinal tract mainly, the specialized structures that are found on the surface of the cells are called microvilli. These microvilli are finger-like projections and they enhance absorption. So the function of these microvilli are to enhance absorption. They're not only found in the small intestines, but they're also found on epithelial cells that are found in the proximal convoluted tubules of the kidneys. So the functions of these microvilli is to enhance absorption, to increase the surface area of absorption. Another specialized uh, projection that is found on the surface of the cell is what we call stereocilia. Stereocilia is also called uh, stereovilli. So stereocilia are found mainly in the epididymis and in the ductus deferens that is in the male reproductive organ, all right? So a special characterization of these stereocilia is that they are non-motile. They are non-motile. So stereocilia increase the cell surface area that facilitates the movement of molecules in and out of the cell. So this is the function of stereocilia. They increase the cell surface area, facilitating the movement of molecules into and out of the cell. For microvilli, we say that they increase the surface area of absorption. Stereocilia increase the cell surface area, facilitating the movement of substances in and out of the cell. The third specialized projection on the surface of the cell are what we call cilia. Now, cilia, cilia are able to beat, they are able to move. So the function of cilia is that they aid in the movement of substances. Cilia are mostly found in the respiratory tract, in the trachea, in the bronchus, and they're also found in the fallopian tube. Okay, now let's look at the types of epithelia that we have. Let's move on to the type of epithelia that we have. So epithelial tissue is divided into two groups. This is according to their structure and their function. The first one is called covering epithelia, which we are doing in this video, and then granular epithelia, we're going to do it in another video. So covering epithelia and granular epithelia. So grand, covering epithelia, as the name suggests, just covers or lines body surfaces. So covering epithelia is classified according to one, the number of cell layers. The number of cell layers. So if your covering epithelia just has one cell layer, we say it is simple epithelia. But if it has more than one layer, we say it is a stratified epithelia. We say it is a stratified epithelia. So that's one classification, the number of cell layers. Secondly, the morphological features of the cells in the surface layer. So we classify covering epithelia using two ways. Number one, the number of cell layers. Number two, the morphological features of the cells in the surface layer. So we say simple epithelia just has one lining. So look at this diagram here. 
This diagram shows epithelial cells which have one layer, and these cells, the shape is squamous. So to classify this epithelia here, we say it is a simple squamous epithelia. Why? Because it has one layer and the shape of the epithelial cells are squamous. So we say it is simple squamous epithelia. We say it is simple squamous epithelia. Look at this one here. This cell has got one layer. Okay? This epithelia has got one layer. And the shape of the cells is cuboidal. So we say this is simple cuboidal epithelia. This is simple cuboidal epithelia. Look at this. This is an epithelial tissue that has got one layer. And the cells here are longer than they are wide. So we know these are columnar cells. Okay? So this is simple columnar epithelia. How do I know it is a single layer? Because the nucleus here, have you seen? The nucleus here are just one layer. But on the apical surface of these cells, there's a, there's a specialization. And this specialization here is cilia. So to fully name or to describe this epithelia, we'll say simple ciliated columnar epithelia. So this is simple columnar epithelia but it has cilia. So you say simple ciliated columnar epithelia. So this is how we describe this is how we describe epithelia. Now let's go to stratified epithelia. Stratified epithelia is classified according to the cell shape or its superficial layer. So you can have squamous okay squamous epithelia if your cells your epithelial cells are flat, cuboidal epithelia, if your epithelial cells are cubed, have got a square-shaped, columnar epithelia, if your epithelial cells have got a columnar shape, or they can be transitional epithelium. Transitional epithelia is also called uro uroepithelium because it is found in the urinary system. Okay. So transitional epithelia is a type of epithelia which is able to change shape. The epithelia that is able to change shape is what we call transitional epithelia. Let's look at examples. Okay, so now look at this epithelial tissue here. This epithelial tissue has got a lot of layers. So this is stratified epithelia, but the shape of the cells are squamous. So we say stratified squamous epithelia. So this is stratified squamous epithelia. Okay. So stratified columnar epithelia is very rare. And, and it is only present in, in uh, very small areas or limited areas in your body, such as the ocular conjunctiva in your eye, and in your large ducts of your salivary, salivary glands. So that is uh, stratified columnar epithelia. Let's look at examples. Okay. So that's where you find stratified columnar epithelia. Transitional epithelia is found in your urinary bladder, in your ureter, and in the upper part of your urethra. So it is also found in your calyxes, in your kidney. So remember, we said that transitional epithelium is also called uroepithelium because it is found in the urinary system. So this is the type of transitional epithelia. This diagram here shows the transitional epithelium. This is how it appears histologically under a microscope. So there's another classification of epithelium tissue that we call pseudo-stratified epithelium. Pseudo-stratified epithelium. So pseudo-stratified epithelia is a type of epithelia where you're not really sure if it is simple epithelium or it is stratified epithelium. 
it is a bit confusing because you can't tell from the nucleus whether it is a single layer of cells or it is a stratified layer of cells. So because you are not sure whether it is a simple epithelium or stratified epithelium, you say it is pseudo stratified epithelium. So the best known example of this type of epithelium is called ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium that is found in your respiratory passages, in your trachea, in your bronchioles. So this picture that this picture just shows the ciliated pseudo stratified epithelium that you find in the in your respiratory passages, which are the trachea and your bronchioles. Okay. So for epithelia, you have to know where each type of epithelia is found. You have to know where each type of epithelia is found. Transitional epithelia, we've already talked about this, and we said it is found in your urinary system, in your urinary bladder, in your ureta, in the upper part of your urethra. Ciliated pseudostratified epithelia, we said it is found in the respiratory tract, in your, in your trachea, in your bronchi. Uh, columnar epithelia is found mostly in your GIT. Stratified squamous epithelia is found in your esophagus, in your vagina. Okay. In your skin, on your skin, the type of epithelia that is found there is called keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. So this table just shows us the types of covering epithelia in the human body. Okay, so the simple squamous epithelia is found lying in your blood vessels. Okay. Simple cuboid epithelia is found covering the ovary and in the thyroid. So this table is very important because it shows you the type of epithelia and where it is found. Simple columnar epithelia is found in the lining of the intestine, the small intestine and the large intestine and the gallbladder. Pseudostratified columnar epithelia is found in the lining of the trachea, the bronchi and the nasal cavity. Stratified squamous epithelia with keratin is found in the epididymis or in the epidermis of the skin and stratified squamous epithelia is found in the mouth, in the esophagus, in the larynx, in the vagina, and in the anal canal. Stratified cuboidal epithelia is found in sweat glands and in developing ovarian follicles. Transitional epithelia is found in the bladder, in the ureters, in the renal calyxes. And stratified columnar epithelia is found in the conjunctiva of the eye. All right. So this table is very, very important for you to know and to understand. From this video, if you are to take out anything, understand this table. Make sure you understand this table because this is what will come in your exam. All right. Now, the other types of epithelia that you should know about, these include the neuroepithelial cells, Okay, so the neuroepithelial cells are those special type of epithelia that have got uh, a neurosensory function, such as your taste buds in your mouth and uh, those epithelia that are found in the in your nose. So they have got a sensory, a neurosensory function. They are able to pick up stimuli and send it to the brain. The other type of epithelia that uh, you should know about is myoepithelial cells. These are able to contract. So they've got myocontractility abilities. They are specialized for contraction and they're mainly found in granular epithelia in association with secretory units of the mammary gland and salivary gland. So this type of epithelia contract and they they, they make the secretions that are found in the, in the glands to, to come out. Okay, so this is the end of our lesson.
on epithelial cells if you have any questions type them in the comment box below make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos on granular epithelia and all the topics that you are going to cover in second year anatomy as well as physiology in biochemistry and in microbiology and immunology all right so you can register for one-on-one -on -one lessons at our academy excellent grades academy you can register for physical classes that we hold at the university campus ridgeway campus main campus and for also online classes on the number that is reflecting on your screen all right until next time see you